Hey and welcome back to a new video. If you've been following my channel for a long time, then you probably know that I'm not a huge fan of bench tables. In my career, especially as active extreme overclockers, I tried multiple things over the years. Starting with like a real professional bench table from Dimas Tech, that's probably 15 to 20 years ago, and it was a pretty huge piece. But back then it was also a bit different because we were still using hard disk drives or like optical drives and having everything packed into like a case was kind of handy. But then things changed. We went to SSDs and like USB drives and everything. And also for my videos, I never really found those, yeah, huge bench tables helpful. Not only doesn't it really look on, good on camera while it's sitting next to me, also it's not that nice to me to have something that huge on the table, so it doesn't really help. Then I often try things like, you know, just the mainboard box, which is doing the job quite well. And then eventually I went to this. And then last year I thought, why not just optimize this and create my own bench table? And that's what we will look at in today's video. The Seasonic Prime PX2200 is currently one of the strongest PSUs available and it comes with two native PCIe 5.1 connectors which allow us to even hook up natively to RTX 5090. That is perfect for any overclocking system or high-end workstations. I'm also currently running this PSU and so far I'm really satisfied with its quality and performance. The cables are very flexible, there are also cable comps included and in addition also a 90 degree ATX 24 pin adapter which also functions as a PSU tester at the same time. The fan is semi-passive and even at a high load it is still very quiet. Find all information about this PSU in the link in the description. There are multiple criteria for me that I'm just setting for myself for what I like in a bench table. First of all, it has to be cheap and just very easy to use. And that's why I ended up using exactly this, which is just a, a PCB with some standoffs mounted to it. Like in between using this Dimas Tech bench table and this, I often just used the motherboard box. And then I often also saw people using the motherboard box and then just putting this, yeah, just anti-static film or like back on top, which is something I can't recommend because those backs are usually coated to be conductive and that's something you should avoid. But the motherboard box is usually the way to go. It's not conductive and it lifts up the motherboard, which is the main thing you want. You want the mainboard to be just a little bit elevated from the table because of the GPU. So the GPU always has this finger on the I.O. shield that is going down here, like in front of the I.O. area. That is what's usually going into the case, right? And yeah, that's the only reason that prevents us from just putting the motherboard on the table and then just put the GPU inside and go with it without any hassle. But that's not the case. So we have to lift up the motherboard, which is why the motherboard box is usually quite handy. And also the reason why I ended up using this PCB because at some point I started collecting these like empty PCBs from mainboard manufacturers and it just added some standoffs to it and that used to be my bench table for the previous years. Mid last year I thought okay it would be quite nice to have a similar PCB like this but just add some features to it which would help me with shooting or producing my videos and like just improve my testing. But the thing is then I just started also testing more water-cooled cards and especially like the 5090 Founders Edition. That was one of the points where I thought okay something has to be changed when I added cards into the motherboard. And this is exactly what I was talking about that there is this finger that is reaching lower than the motherboard itself. So this would just hit the desk if there was nothing underneath to elevate the motherboard a little bit. And in the past I was often lazy. Like years ago I used to just remove the I.O. shield completely. So in old videos I often have cards where the motherboard sits directly on the desk and I just removed the I.O. shield. And if I was extremely lazy then I just bend it up. But at some point I thought you know if you have some 2000 euro GPUs you should maybe just not bend some of the parts and sometimes I have, have to return them. So yeah that was a point where I thought I have to somehow stop doing that and do something properly. Then there is this thing, especially with those heavy cards, you can see they always tilt a little bit, so they're not really stable. And my often go-to solution is to use these plastic things that are always sitting on like the PCIe finger and I just put this underneath here somehow and like this, it just, yeah, it works. 
but it's not really professional. And that's how I ended making my own like customized bench table. And with a lot more features than I originally intended. Because originally I just wanted to have this flat mount, just adding extra features, especially the GPU mount and everything else that I needed. Which was just flat and then I reached out to other YouTubers and also SIs to check if they are interested in getting a bench table to just estimate what kind of quantity we will do. Like will I just make 20 pieces and send it out to some friends or will I just maybe also do 100 or like 200 units. And then most of the SIs and like other YouTubers said that they would not use the flat mount rather just this big thing assembly having an opportunity to mount your PSU. So I changed the design and we added some feet to it and the possibility to add the PSU to the bench table while keeping my main objective to have the flat mount. But I think I will just show it to you. And of course my bench table is called the bench table. Inside you straight find this manual that also includes and shows every single step for no matter if you want to go for the flat mount or the more complex one. And underneath we straight find the main part of the bench table product. In the end the product turned out to be much more complex than I originally intended with the PCB having also a lot more functions but also the physical appearance or design is more complex. So we have the 1.6 millimeter thick PCB on top, 6 millimeter thick acrylic and then underneath we have a 3 millimeter high CNC milled aluminium sheet that is sitting underneath. When we showed this the first time I also read some weird comments about this is only just a PCB and then some other people were stating it's a PCB with plastic underneath but it's, it's a PCB with plastic and with aluminium underneath. We have to get things straight. So the problem was that initially we just made the PCB. I wanted to add like connectors and features to it which worked but the problem which then existed or I realized was putting it on a mouse pad or even just a desk even worse is that you're scratching everything because all the pins that go through like from the fan headers and from the six pin everything is going through the PCB and you can't just put it on the desk everything will be scratched and looks terrible so I thought okay we had we have to add a layer underneath which was the acrylic layer. At the same time I thought it would be quite nice to have RGB LEDs underneath to just give it some nice effect for my videos and that's why we added the acrylic sheet which has like cutouts for all the connectors that are sitting on top to yeah, mitigate the problem of the pins hitting the desk or whatever is laying underneath. Then there is a thing that acrylic is not that nice when it comes to adding threads to it for stability reasons. And that's why I thought it will be just the best to add another layer underneath for stability which is the 3 millimeter aluminum sheet that contains all the threads for mounting. So now all the, the, um, the holes are through holes and all the threads are inside the aluminum which just gives it a lot more stability and also has a nice side effect that the light will only shine through the corner which is blasted also to give it this nice matte look or effect. And this way it's super stable and also just feels much more high quality. There's a crazy amount of features that we implemented on this bench table. We're starting with the power delivery which just goes over this standard PCIe 6 pin connector and this is also powering for example the USB ports and the USB A ports are 500 milliamps and the USB C ports are with 3 amps shared just coming from this connector. And also power wise if I need for example a ground 5 volt or 12 volt for any kind of project I can also add some wires to this or just use this for probing if needed. The most important feature of this bench table is kind of this USB cable which goes from here to the top of your motherboard so one of these USB uh, internal connectors and this is creating the data connection to the USB ports, so these, and also the SD card slots. The idea behind this was to keep things as easy and simple as possible. I can just take a motherboard, put it on here, add the USB cable and I will directly get mouse and keyboard and also the four micro SD cards, which are extremely cheap, like this 64 gigabyte SanDisk, it's not even 10 euros here. And with this I can have four of them, I ha can have Windows image, can have one with BIOS files that I will need for flashing my motherboards and then drivers and also other software. And while it's not super fast, it's still fast enough for just daily stuff 
especially like BIOS updates, even USB 2.0 is absolutely sufficient for this. And honestly speaking, we were thinking of making this USB 3.0 to have higher speed because for example, this SD card theoretically is about 140 megabyte per second. And in this with USB 2.0, it will be about 50 megabyte per second. But it would have been much more complex and I wasn't sure if we will be able to yeah, get this working or not. This was also a cooperation with Elmore and he had concerns that it might not be as stable and it would drastically increase the cost. Then there's also the option to add SATA drives, two of them, but they don't go through the USB, they would go through those ports and then just be wired through just two SATA cables into the motherboard. And the point for me here was to, for example, have my games library for Steam on there because Otherwise, I will always have to just download it every th a single time for all the games again when doing a new OS and just takes too much time. Then there are also the three different fan zones and the pump zone. All of those fan zones, they are supplied with three amps for the entire zone, while the pump zone is three amps per header to also have enough power to power a DDC or a D5 pump. And then there's always a switch next to it, that's for pump and for the fan zone, where you can select either 50%, 100% speed or external. External goes over this four pin and there is a four pin wire included. And with this, you can, for example, just go on top to the motherboard, to the CPU fan header, and then just run it over this when it comes to the PWM speed. All features and accessories, everything included, is also fully detailed in the manual. And what I want to do now is add the GPU bracket, the radiator mounting brackets, and also in the end we're calling it the additional mechanical features, and that's the what I call the flat mount. So just add those small standoffs to the bottom of the aluminum plate. For the GPU mounting bracket, which I already added, it's just important to pay attention to the whole location that these holes are pointing like the short side to the right direction. And then there are also two of these fan or radiator mounting brackets and they will be mounted from the front like this with four screws from the back side. On the back side there is this six thread pattern and there's basically a narrow and a wide mount. Narrow would be for 120 millimeter base configuration, so for 240 or for 360 radiators or fans. And this would be the narrow one, so using this, and this would be for the 120 millimeter config and the white one, which is the outer one, and this outer one is for 140 millimeter fans or like radiators. With those slotted holes, it's also possible to adjust the position of the radiator or the fan. So just pull this out or push it in and then tighten the screws at whatever position you need. And this is the assembled state I'm going to use. With all the cables that are needed already in place and also kind of hidden underneath, also added the power and reset cables. There is the internal USB cable and also the RGB and also the fan signal cable. Now I want to see how it looks like when it's running and while it's not really that necessary on this motherboard because it already has a power switch, on a lot of other motherboards that I'm using I don't have that and then the power switch on the bottom is quite useful. This is really exactly what I wanted. It's adding functionality but also design. Like on, I think for the videos, this looks pretty awesome with the RGB strips on the bottom or the RGB LEDs but with the acrylic yeah, really happy how this turned out. And now for me also the possibility to just have the GPUs sitting or resting on this bar. I'm still lazy, so most of the time I will not screw this down, but that's already enough for the GPU to not wobble around. As I pointed out earlier, aside from the flat mount, there is also the, I would say, normal mount where people can also place their PSU inside the bench table. And for that, there are four additional aluminum pieces. So those two feet and the mounting brackets for the PSU. And they also have a very special dedicated shape. I got some help from a very skilled uh, Grizzly engineer for this because he has a lot of experience in like sheet metal design and how to shape it to give it eventually, once it's mounted, a lot more stability because I just, when I made the original design, it was just like a basic rectangle and with only a rectangle, you don't have a lot of stability. If you would want to bend it, move it back and forth, it would not be stable. But with this design, 
with both of the feet being like pointed slightly or tilted slightly outwards and like this Z shape in the middle, all of this combined once it's mounted makes the bench table insanely stable. There's only one thing to pay attention to while mounting these feet and that's the additional bend that you have on one side of the legs and they have to be in the direction of the radiator mounting. So this would be the full assembly with the legs mounted and also a PSU inside which is not the way I'm using the bench table but I mean it's like different people have different preferences. I also want to point out that that's also the way how we use it as Grizzly internally. We have a lot of test benches that we are running for different like scenarios just for daily water cooling testing or just long term testing. We have different setups and the bench table is really useful for that but for me most important for my side is the flat mount and like I'm so happy that I, I have the opportunity to make a product like this just for myself exact, exactly with all the needs that I have and being able to turn this into a product makes me truly truly happy and uh, also being able to share this with you even though I know that this is a product that 99% of, of you just don't need like any normal user at home doesn't need a bench table but yeah this is my bench table and I'm happy that I can now use it and it will make my life a lot easier. And that's why I'm yeah, happy to share this video with you and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye bye.